Huntington's African American History Tour. Starring Mr. Reiner and Mr. Bankston. Stop one, Douglas Senior and Junior High. This is Mr. Bankston here from Douglas Junior Senior High School. The school was the uh, all African American school in Huntington. It was created in 1924. Some notable alumni is Cal Greer and also Carter G. Woodson. Carter G. Woodson actually attended here, and, uh, attended at a different location, and was at the school for two years and graduated high school and came back and became principal for three years here at the school. Not only was it a junior senior high school, but it was served as a community uh, hot, hot spot for the uh, African-American community in Huntington. Uh, it closed down in 1961 after the Brown versus Board of Education ruling and the African-American students were uh, integrated to Huntington High School. Stop two, the Carter G. Woodson statue. All right guys, I'm standing here in front of the Carter G. Woodson statue on Howard Greer Boulevard. Just wanted to tell you guys a little bit of information about Carter G. Woodson. Carter G. Woodson came to Huntington, West Virginia originally born in Virginia, but moved here because his family and his dad got a job at the railroad. So he went to school at Douglas, graduated in two years, and then later on became the principal of Douglas High School. What he's known for is become, being the father of black history. Before him, nobody was really teaching about black history or thought it was important. He developed a curriculum and then eventually created Black History Week. So this is how Carter G. Woodson is tied to Huntington. Stop three, the Memphis, Tennessee Garrison House. Hey guys, I'm standing in front of the Memphis Garrison House. Um, she was a pillar of the Huntington community, even later on in her life. She was born in Virginia, moved to Gary, West Virginia, which is in the southern part of the state. There she created a, a, the NAACP chapter of Gary, West Virginia which turned uh, into a, a thriving chapter of the NAACP in Southern West Virginia. She was very, uh, she was a substitute teacher and a, and a regular teacher at one time. She was the uh, Republican Party's uh, president for the, for the Black Caucus. And when she moved here in 1952, she created the first African-American Girl Scout troop, which was never to be seen in Huntington. Uh, from then on, she was a, Huge influence in politics and civil rights through in Huntington. So uh, this home right now is being restored and trying to make it into an African American uh, and civil rights museum for Huntington, West Virginia. The Memphis, Tennessee Garrison House is one of three historic sites in West Virginia that are on the National Civil Rights Trail. Stop four, the Barnett Hospital. Alright guys, I am standing in front of the Hospital. At one time, this was the African American Hospital here in Huntington. It was owned and operated by Dr. C. C. Barnett. He originally was born in Virginia, but came to Huntington to be a prominent figure in our community. This hospital eventually closed in 1939, but at one point housed 50 beds, and it was at one time one of the only few, sorry, uh, nursing hospitals. Stop five, the sit-in at the White Pantry. All right, guys, when I'm standing in front of the former White Pantry, what happened in Huntington in the 60s mirrored things that happened throughout the whole country. In 1960, uh, four African-American uh, <clears throat> students in Greensboro, North Carolina, had a sit-in at a Woolworths restaurant. What was going on at this time, we were going through segregated, we still segregated things, and especially restaurants. Don't, and Tim. The, uh, Four African American students wanted to sit in a along the counter side of the of uh, the Woolworths in Greensboro and was refused service and actually was drug out by the police. Here in the White Pantry, where I'm standing from now, in 1963, the same thing happened here in Huntington. The owner of the White Pantry did not feel that segregation had, should happen. Unlike most Huntingtonites, already felt that they wanted to move on and evolve other, other like the other southern cities. So some students came in from Marshall University. Uh, had a sit-in here at the White Pantry. This sit-in happened on numerous occasions. The owner stated that the government could tell me what to do, but they can't tell me how to cook. 
So the owner also, uh, to dissolve the whole sit-in situation, would bring sulfur cakes, light them on, and to disrupt the uh, nature of the sit-in. Now, the White Pantry was not known for their great service or their food. It was actually subpar, it was stated. And the uh, information about the uh, sulfur cakes came from a former uh, waitress here at the White Pantry. Again, White Pantry sit-in. Stop six, Hal Greer. All right, guys, I'm standing in front of the Cam Henderson Center on Marshall University's campus. We're not going to talk about Cam Henderson, but we're going to talk about another predominant athlete from uh, West Virginia and Huntington, Hal Greer. Hal Greer came to Huntington, was born here in Huntington in 1936, played his high school basketball at the uh, segregated Douglas High School, which we mentioned before. He came here, played three years because he couldn't play as a freshman because the NCAA wouldn't allow that. He scored over 1,300 points in his three years. He actually took Marshall to his first NCAA tournament in 1956. In 1958, he was drafted in the second round 13th pick by the Syracuse Nationals. Later, the Syracuse Nationals moved from Syracuse over to Philadelphia and, 70, Philadelphia and became the 76ers. There, in 1967, he won the uh, NBA championship with Robin Cy Wilt Chamberlain. And he's played uh, in 10 All-Star games and uh, was on the uh, greatest 50 team of the NBA. Soon, Marshall's going to have a statue in place in front of the Cam Henderson Center for him. He is in the NBA, uh, Cam Henderson, I'm sorry, Hal Greer is in the uh, Hall of Fame here at Marshall and also in the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, Illinois. Stop seven. The Diamond Teeth Mary Historical Marker. Is it a rabbit car? Gospel blues singer throughout the 20th century. She was born here in Huntington, raised here. But at the age of 18, she came down here to the train station, hopped on the train, and never came back. She performed at the Apollo Theater, she performed at Frank Hall all around the country. Well, she gets her nickname Diamond Teeth because she had taken the diamond, diamonds out of her bracelet as a foot into her teeth. So that's where she gets the nickname Diamond Teeth Man. Over the past few years, they have held a blues and arts festival in memory of Diamond Teeth Mary here in Huntington. Stop 8, A.D. Lewis. Hello guys, how you doing? It's Mr. Reiner. I'm at the A.D. Lewis Center. Well, I wanted to talk to you guys about the person A.D. Lewis. A.D. Lewis was born in Virginia, moved here because of the railroad. While he was here in Huntington, he became the pastor at 16th Street Baptist Church right over here in Huntington. During that time, he oversaw the construction of the church and when he died, he donated this plot of land for a community center. So this right here, the A.D. Lewis Center, was donated by A.D. Lewis. Stop nine, the 16th Street Baptist Church. Hello guys, I'm standing right in front of the 16th Street Baptist Church here in Huntington. The first church was established in 1905. So this is actually the second one. But this one was uh, designed by the first African-American architect in West Virginia, John C. Norman. This was built, completed in 1924, and has since been a pillar of the Huntington community. In the, during the Great Depression, they added the term community center, and has been one of the longest standing community centers here in Huntington. If you would like to read more about Huntington's African-American history, I highly suggest this book, Black Huntington. It came out last year and goes into great depth about Huntington's early history and how African-Americans influenced the history of Huntington. We hope you enjoyed our, our tour today, and we encourage all of you to get out in your local community and enjoy your local history.